I am Lori Esposito Murray, President of the Committee for Economic Development, the Public Policy Center of the Conference Board. And welcome to CED's Leadership and Challenging Times discussion, where we feature the outstanding business leaders who are recipients of CED's Distinguished Leadership Awards for corporate citizenship and business stewardship. This year, CED is paying special tribute to business leaders and their company teams who have helped our nation navigate the many challenges before us, including the pandemic, an economic recovery that provides equal opportunity for all Americans, building a more civil and just society, and upholding a rules-based international order. All values extremely important to the mission of CED. Today, I have the privilege of speaking with our 2023 honoree, Dr. Lisa Su, who is Chair and CEO of Advanced Micro Devices. AMD is a global semiconductor company, a global leader in high-performance computing. Dr. Su is an electrical engineer who is an expert in semiconductor devices and high-performance processors. Originally from Taiwan, she pioneered new ways to connect computer chips using copper instead of aluminum, an incredible breakthrough resulting in 20% faster chip speeds. AMD has helped solve the world's most important challenges. So we have a lot to talk about, but first welcome Dr. Sue, congratulations, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Larry. It's a wonderful honor to be here and uh, looking forward to the discussion. Well, that's great. You have led the company through extraordinary growth. Since becoming CEO in 2014, revenue has grown from $5 billion to almost $25 billion, and the market cap has increased $150 billion. My question is, what did you see in AMD a decade ago when you took the job? Well, I have to say, uh, you know, I, I grew up as an engineer or, or a semiconductor uh, device engineer, and, um, you know, in our field, uh, the uh, the most exciting things are you know building high performance processors and uh, you know at AMD that's what we do we push the envelope on computing and um, ten years ago when I joined the company uh, it it was one of the few companies actually that uh, really had all of the uh, intellectual property and the um, uh, the assets uh, to really be a leader in the field and um, you know I've very much enjoyed uh, my time over um, you know the last uh, ten years really you know building. Uh, what we believe um, are some of the most important um, you know, high-performance processors that go into um, lots and lots of applications um, you know, across the market. So uh, that's what brought me to AMD. And you know, every day we're pushing the envelope on computing, so it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Well, and your accomplishments are really outstanding. And you've said that one of your driving principles is that technology should do good. So how are you achieving that at AMD? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a really... Uh, you know, exciting time. It it used to be that you know technology and and semiconductors were actually um, under the covers, and so people didn't really think about uh, what uh, what chips do. And um, you know now I think it's become uh, very very clear that semiconductors are at the heart of um, just about every application um, that you can imagine. And you know using technology for good um, from my standpoint is uh, there are so many things that can be better with technology. And uh, so many, um, so much of our research and development could be better if we're using uh, more advanced technology. You know, one of the examples I'll give you is, uh, you know, one of my most favorite projects uh, that I've worked on over the last few years uh, has been um, in partnership with um, our national labs. So um, Oak Ridge National Labs uh, right now has the fastest supercomputer in the world, and uh, we've spent the last few years building it with them. It actually just, uh, you know, just turned on um, last year. And uh, it uses our high performance uh, CPUs and GPUs, and it uh, it runs. Um, I'll just you know put a put a number out there. It runs uh, you know more than one exaflop of computing. And what it uh, what we're doing with the computing is we're solving some of the most important problems uh, for the country. You know things like um, uh, science research, uh, climate research. Um, you know looking at uh, new uh, healthcare solutions and understanding more about. Uh, you know diseases and 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 you know really how to cure disease. So um, you know, that's an example of where uh, yes we, we're building really really uh, big computers, but we're also solving really really important problems. And uh, there are lots and lots of examples like that. Well, that's all very exciting and and absolutely critical. And 
especially over the past several years we've seen uh, since the pandemic was unleashed, really unpredictable and roller coaster uh, times for business leaders, for the global community. Uh, and this was particularly hit the semiconductor industry. And the sector disruptions were then compounded by these uh, larger uh, changes and shifts uh, that were happening, the social justice movement, the war in Ukraine, the banking crisis. What are the leadership principles that guide you through disruption, and how do you plan for the unpredictable? Yeah, it it has been uh, a very um, unpredictable time. I think the last few years for all of us as business leaders in different sectors, it's it's been unpredictable. Um, I think what you know the pandemic um, you know taught us is that uh, people can be really really good um, in times of crisis, and actually it can uh, you know motivate um, you know really significant uh, discovery and innovation and change. And you know I think the pandemic you know is a wonderful example. I mean for for semiconductors. Uh, what it meant was um, the demand for computing just went through the roof. I mean, we've never seen uh, such high demand as we saw during the pandemic. Because if you think about it, um, in a, in you know just a, a moment's notice, we trans transitioned from you know uh, working from home, uh, working remotely, um, you know educating, you know schooling from home. Um, you know people wanted to connect when they couldn't travel. Uh, and and that just uh, really changed you know sort of the the trajectory that we were on. And frankly, the industry is better as a result of it. You know, we've built a lot more resiliency um, into our supply chains. Uh, you know, the uh, Chips and Science Act was, uh, you know, was passed here in the United States that, uh, you know, really focused on, um, you know, semiconductor industry investment. And you know, again, this is just one example. If I think about just the amazing work that went on, um, you know, in the healthcare professions, um, in the travel profession, like so many uh, things were, uh, you know, sort of discovered when we really had to uh, make changes. So the, the way I think about um, you know, some of the disruptions that you talked about, yes, we can look at it from, boy, you know, um, you know, very volatile, or you can also look at it as uh, how do we bring out the best in our companies, um, in our industries, in our ecosystems uh, to, uh, uh, to really you know, bring about um, you know, very uh, lasting change. I'd like to follow up on a number of those points, but I, I want to start with uh, how do you prioritize these major challenges? So the inflation, recession, stability of the financial system, geopolitical disruption, and we can go on and on. What are what are you most worried about and what are you most optimistic about? Well, I, I think, um, you know, we look at all of those things. Uh, you know, all of those things are certainly on the radar screen um, as, a, uh, as a CEO. Um, from um, the... Uh, you know, what do we worry about? I, I don't know if worry is the right answer, but we certainly monitor, uh, you know, very much the uh, overall uh, financial markets. And, um, you know, the thought process there is just making sure that we are in tune uh, with what long-term demand is going to be, uh, such that, um, you know, we scale the company correctly. And that that goes for up and down, right? I mean, uh, there, there, there are periods where demand is a bit softer. Uh, you know, there is some macroeconomic uncertainty and, and we, we scale the business that way. And there are also periods where demand is extraordinarily high and we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we can satisfy, um, you know, all of our, our customers and partners out there. Um, so that's something that we mo monitor, you know, uh, very closely. Um, and, you know, from a longer term perspective, what I'm most excited about is I think the, the role of technology is uh, just going to become more and more important. Uh, you know, every... Um, you know, every you know, period has you know something that defines it. Uh, I think high performance computing uh, certainly defined um, you know much of the last few years. You know, as we look forward, um, I'm incredibly excited about um, artificial intelligence and um, you know the capabilities there. Now, I know we have to be balanced because there are, uh, you know, we we have to make sure that the technology is um, you know is uh, appropriately used. Uh, but the the capability is is so amazing, and so I, I always uh, love to see ways where you know technology can you know really transform the way we live every day. Yeah, it's, we're definitely a, a major pivotal historical point uh, we're at in terms of uh, technology advances. I'd like to go uh, back to your uh, comments about how we work, and well, uh, what's particularly um, interesting is how you fostered a culture of innovation at AMD with a remote workforce? And also, how do you see the future of work unfolding going forward? I know that's an area that you're, you're very much focused on. Yeah, I, I think for all of us, um, you know, we're, we're all finding what is the right long-term model. 
Um, I think we we proved to ourselves that uh, we we could uh, work remotely and we could partner remotely and and we could um, you know also innovate remotely. Um, I will also say though, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm a little bit old fashioned, and I think meeting people in person and spending time together is uh, is also uh, super important. And so what we try to do uh, at uh, at AMD is we have um, we have you know, sort of a, a lot of flexibility in how we're working, but um, at the end of the day, for uh, some of the most, you know, critical and most creative and most innovative um, opportunities, we do try to bring people together because we think that uh, from a innovation standpoint, uh, you know, spending, uh, having teams, you know, co-locate are, are very helpful and, and then they can go off and, and do some of their uh, individual tasks after that, that sort of ideation period. And, and so the 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 approach to uh, how to work is also a part of uh, inclusion and diversity, uh, which uh, are really important values at AMD. Uh, and I hope you could share with us how you're making those values living values at AMD, so that uh, it could serve as a model. A number of uh, all, all all businesses are struggling with try, making sure they're successful uh, in this area. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, diversity and inclusion is one of our you know core values. Um, it's in our culture statement. It's something that we live every day. And um, I think if you take a step back and say, you know, why is it important? I mean, the, the truth is, we want the best talent. And you know, in an in industry uh, like tech, it's so important that we have um, the best talent. And the best talent is going to be a diverse team. Uh, you will get better answers. You will get different perspectives. You will have the ability. Um, to uh, to innovate and to um, you know come up with new ideas at a different pace, and so with that as a background, uh, you know we have um, looked broadly for talent. So um, I think that's that's a key piece. Uh, we we actually um, you know, do that at the very uh, beginning stages. So you know early um, early career hires, um, we try to make sure are quite um, quite diverse, and then it's all about creating opportunities uh, for people um, along the way, and so. Uh, you know, with mentorship and with, um, you know, good, uh, you know, sort of um, good opportunities uh, to um, all uh, folks, um, I think, in, uh, f- you know, from a talent development standpoint, I think we're able to uh, really uh, attract and retain some of the best and brightest. Uh, but it is definitely work. And it's uh, definitely something that um, that I spend time with that my staff uh, spends, um, you know, quite a bit of time with so that we can create, um, you know, that culture within the company. And and as a concluding uh, question, uh, who are the most important leadership role models uh, that helped shape your values? Yeah, so um, I've been very lucky. I've had some great uh, mentors, um, you know, throughout uh, my career. I, I would you know say that I spent uh, much of the early part of my career at IBM, so I had the opportunity uh, to actually work with Lou Gerstner uh, for a period of time. Actually, when I was a, a very early in my career and you know, just you know, watching uh, watching him and how uh, you know he spent his time and how he made decisions in a company as large and complex uh, as uh, as IBM really you know gave me sort of a, a little bit of an inkling as to what a CEO might do. Um, you know, my my mother was also a very important mentor for me. Uh, you know, she was a um, a uh, you know a immigrant to the United States. Uh, you know, she came with uh, you know two very very you know. I, w- I was born in Taiwan, but I came to the United States when I was three. Uh, you know, my mother decided that she wanted to become an entrepreneur, and, uh, and so she started a business here in the U.S. You know, sort of the the American dream, um, you know, piece of it. And you know, I just saw how hard she worked and and how uh, important it was to you know build relationships and um, you know make uh, good business decisions. So. Um, yeah, I've, I, I think I've had um, a lot of great mentors um, in my career, and I, you know, it's actually one of the things I think that is most important is, uh, you know, for all of us uh, who have had success in our career to continue to mentor people. So, you know, I um, I enjoy that uh, very much as part of my job as well, and and uh, sometimes I I select the mentor uh, mentee and say, hey, I I think I'd like to be your mentor, and um, and I've uh, really enjoyed that uh, um, you know those relationships. Well, we're very much looking forward to uh, actually being together in October. And uh, along with uh, being hosted by our trustees, you're also going to meet our CED fellows. We run a fellowship program for mid-career women as a way of helping them 
uh, progress and learn from our trustees and, and progress in their careers. So we'll have the opportunity to do that. I know they're very excited. Uh, but again, it is our privilege uh, to be honoring you and the AMD team. Thank you so much for joining us today and sharing these insights. And we look forward to October. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to be here.